Rio. Welcome to Minsky, and obviously welcome to the Minsky Rio de Janeiro conference. Uh, it's uh, great to have you here in Rio, my hometown, and uh, I'm sure you're going to enjoy both Rio and the conference, and I'm not sure my thinking about in which order. I have mixed feelings in terms of <laughs> Rio in the conference or the conference in Rio. I, I, I'm sure that you're, go you're gonna be enjoying uh, both. Uh, the schedule doesn't allow me proper time to introduce the, the initiative, for the initiative, or even introduce myself properly. So what I'm gonna do instead is just try to uh, throw three broad propositions in order to start the the conversation here, uh, propositions that I think you, a few of you or some of you may want to come back to or to uh, refer to in the coming debates, in the coming uh, panels. Well, my first proposition is the following. I think that the, one of the peculiarities of the ongoing debates uh, and, and also in actual reforms uh, on reforming global financial governance is that there is very little that is truly global about them. If you see the reports or the legislation, the Vickers report, Dodd-Frank, the Lee Cannon, all the reports, they are basically domestic or they are regional if you take the, the European Union. So if you look from a global perspective, it's really scary how gl what what's the global dimension there uh, therefore I think that the basic tension that embedded the global financial crash in 2008 still intact which tension is that one of the more important tensions and the basic tension coming from a global perspective what is it I would say is the imbalance in between global financial markets which are there and acting 24-7, and the lack of a proper institutional framework to discipline their, them, to discipline those markets. So why this is so, I think, is a very good question to be explored. Uh, and of course, the answer to that is far from easy. The question or the, 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 uh, the perception is not that difficult, but how do you deal with that? I think it's extremely difficult. But let me quick, very quickly suggest two ways of looking at the beginning, maybe looking at the beginning of uh, answers to that. Well, the first leads me to my second proposition. For The first one is that imbalances is still intact. The second proposition is that part of the answer of why this is so is that there is a basic conflict, a basic tension, if not a conflict, between the need for more public interest oriented global governance and the demands from every single national government for increased policy space. Everybody wants the global and every government wants more policy space. Well, obviously, I would say both demands are legitimate but they're not easy, really not easy to combine. So the second way, so that that's would be one way why there is so little global in terms of the governance, the public interest oriented global governance in place. The second way to look at that leads me to my third proposition, which is, well, I'm almost reversing the idea that I just uh, offered to you, which is that actually we do have something about global governance in place. But what is it? It's, I, I would suggest, is a patchwork of organizations that are in place, and they exercise de facto global governance. Problem, it's a private system and I think we should address that system as governance by lobbying, or to steal a phrase or 
uh, or a, a very well-known expression invented by Mr. Macaulay, I think we also have in place something like a shadow regulatory system, a, a shadow banking system and a shadow regulatory, like, regulatory system. What is this? Very quickly again, it's represented by hundreds of lobbying groups in action. And by the way, what in the US is treated as a legal practice, lobbying as a legal practice, in other countries, it's just called corruption. But this is something that we have to think about as well. So lobbying groups are everywhere, and they're like able and willing to act, and they're acting. So uh, hundreds of, of lobbying groups, and very concretely, by corporations like the credit rating agencies and the whole bunch of corporations that wrote the laws which now are embedded in a whole host of international trade and investment treaties, including, for example, the financial and other provisions under the WTO. This is a system of governance, yes, but it's basically written by the private corporations for the private corporations. It benefits them, it doesn't benefit, it's not a public-oriented system of global financial governance. So, the problem, as I said, is that this is a private, corporate-sponsored, and basically profit-oriented system of governance. It is completely opaque and totally disconnected from the public interest. This system, I would venture to say, is at the root of the financial crisis. It prevents the, both the buildup of a public interest-oriented system of global financial governance, and it also clashes directly with the demands for incre increased domestic policy space. So, I finish my whatever six minutes by suggesting that the persistence of this governance by lobbying system, as well as the resilience of the shadow regulatory system, are the main menaces that I think we should and we have to face. Why? Because I think they threaten more than the stability of the global financial system. They challenge, after all, the West's role as a leading model of democracy. So maybe you, a few of you who want to come back to one of those propositions in the coming debates. And having said that, I thank you very much for being here. And I would like to uh, ask my colleague Rogerio to introduce very quickly again uh, the link in between the conference and mine. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone, again, and uh, it's a great pleasure to have you all here. Uh, it's a great pleasure for us as MINDS, our multidisciplinary institute on development and strategy, uh, uh, to host, co-host, actually, this conference with the Levy Institute. And for us, it's a great opportunity. And uh, as Leonardo said, uh, by the schedule, we do not have so much time. Uh, to, to, to advance what have been uh, under discussion in minds, but uh, uh, I would like not only to, to thank you all for coming here, uh, not only to say uh, of our pleasure of co-hosting this conference, but also uh, this, I, would, I would like to take this opportunity to uh, uh, announce uh, two projects uh, that minds uh, that, 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 is, that, that is beginning uh, at MINDS now, and those two projects are strictly uh, 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 correlated with the, those themes that will be under discussion uh, during this conference. And not only correlated to those, to those themes, but also uh, the projects that will uh, about to begin, actually that already begun. Uh, those projects are uh, related uh, 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 in the roots of the works of uh, uh, Hyman Minsky, post-Keynesian economics, and uh, uh, 
so uh, uh, basically, those projects uh, 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 are here to discuss uh, one uh, finance for development or financial innovation, the, the relationship between financial innovation and development, uh, 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 shedding uh, light, especially in the role of public banks. Uh, so uh, the idea of this first project, which I am uh, the, 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 the director, uh, the idea is to look at uh, the role uh, that uh, these institutions, public bank, and not only public bank, but uh, when public bank I mean, by public bank I mean not only public bank itself, but uh, uh, development bank as well, and uh, what are the roles of those institutions uh, in fostering development in the roots of uh, uh, Keynesian uh, paradigm, post-Keynesian paradigm, actually. Uh, so uh, uh, the idea is uh, uh, to look at uh, the role that should be played by those institutions in a theoretical standpoint and looking at the Brazilian Indian and Chinese experience. Uh, I was having a, a very good conversation with Albert uh, before this conference started. It's, it's, it's interesting to look at uh, what has been done uh, in those countries uh, uh, and, w and that we could take uh, as lessons of what to do and even uh, what not to do. And uh, the second project that uh, began in minds uh, is the project of financial governance, banking, and financial instability in Brazil, analysis and policy recommendation. Felipe is the uh, project director here. And uh, uh, the idea uh, of this project uh, is to investigate the structure of the Brazilian financial system and its regulatory framework uh, uh, in order to identify sources of stability and instability and to provide policies for reforming Brazil's financial architecture to increase uh, systemic stability as well as the ability to provide funding for development. As you can see, those two projects are, uh, you know, uh, very worried about uh, this interconnectedness between finance and development. But uh, here, we don't like to emphasize, we don't want to emphasize uh, aspects such as uh, 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 how efficient is the financial system. No, uh, uh, the idea of those projects is to emphasize aspects such as functionality of the financial system, because by emphasizing only uh, the idea of uh, 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 efficiency of financial systems, uh, you miss you, perhaps the main part of the story. Uh, so, uh, so uh, uh, a uh, 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 efficient financial system sometimes uh, is not a function of financial system. Uh, and the story, the recent story, has been taught us that this is uh, almost the case. So those two projects uh, 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 <clears throat> goes deep into this idea of uh, financial functionality in order to uh, identify, shed some light on this interconnectedness between uh, uh, financial system, financial innovation, and development, looking at Brazil, in, uh, deeply in Brazil, but also looking at China and India in order to uh, take lessons and uh, suggesting uh, policies as how to uh, uh, increase the functionality of the financial system. So uh, again, it's a great, fantastic pleasure uh, to have you all here. I hope you enjoyed not only the conference, but we as well. It's a fantastic city, uh, in spite of the fact that I wasn't born here, but I feel myself as Kagiwaka. So uh, uh, I would like to welcome you all uh, to the conference and to the city. Thank you a lot. And I would like to invite you to I too want to welcome you to Rio, even though I can't tell you anything about Rio since it's my first time here. And this is, I think, one of the first occasions that I take no responsibility for the weather, I take no responsibility for anything that happens to you. 
I cannot say this when we have conferences in New York, but it's sort of a, a, a uh, I take it sort of breathe very easily by saying I have no responsibility for this. However, I do want to take this occasion to thank uh, Mines and the staff at Mines for being able to organize the, all the logistical details. And of course, um, uh, we would not have this conference if it wasn't for Leonardo Bordamanchi and the Ford Foundation. The uh, Ford Foundation has been supporting uh, the promotion of Minsky, not only in the United States for many, many years, but also now to international activities of the Levy Institute, which one of them is this jointly sponsored conference. Now, throughout the conference, you will hear many, many Minskyan themes, and that is because um, we consider Minsky to be one of the giants of the economics profession, and we stand on the shoulders of these giants in the economic profession. Unfortunately, there are not too many of our kind, but nevertheless, we try to then put as heavy load as we can on Hyman Minsky. Um, I do want to, um, to say that um, Minsky would have had a lot of things to say about what's happening presently after the financial crisis of 2007-2009. Unfortunately, he's not around, but he has left us a lot, not only in his written work, but also in the work, in published work, but also in the work that exists and has been published, and it's on the archives of the Levy Institute. So I would invite you um, to take advantage of that. They're all digitized, and, uh, and therefore I think you have a lot to find in terms of the the power of Minsky's thinking. So I don't want to take more time, um, but I want to say that um, this is a very important conference. Um, those of you who happen to be moving towards Europe in November, there's another conference in Athens. We invite you to come there. There will be continuation of the themes that you, that you will hear today.